Today, we're going to take a, a look at the TubeBuddy Thumbnail Analyzer. Be able to analyze a little bit about your thumbnail and understand its properties and how it works, what thumbnail you would want to use. This is how I use the Thumbnail Analyzer. We'll do that next on Geekism. What's up, my geeks? Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine, Think Magazine, Put Into Geek. You can find me on geekazine.com or youtube.com forward slash geekazine. Like, subscribe, comment, bell notification. YouTubers get their wings. All right, let's take a look at this. So I just got done uh, creating. I'll just move this out of the way. I just got done uh, putting together a video uh, from suno.ai called AI Music. And now what I want to do is I want to add a thumbnail to it. And, and I did do a straight up thumb thumbnail. I went a little bit beyond my norm, which is basically a little strip on the side and then with the text and then the product on the, uh, on the other side. But I want to kind of spice it up a little bit. And I want to do it so it actually gains traction, even as a very small thumbnail. Because you got to remember, if anybody watches through YouTube, they, wa they get suggestions from the side. And the thumbnails on the side are pretty small as opposed to big ones you see on the uh, front page of YouTube and even in searches. So you'll want to have a thumbnail that can be noticeable Notice in a very Notice small me. format Notice and a very large me. format and look good and catch the people's attention. So I'm going through a lot of the properties of creating this thumbnail. In fact, uh, we'll bring up the thumbnail creation here. We got my alternative one right here, and that's basically uh, the way I would normally do it. So I had the title in here that exactly matches the title of the YouTube video itself. So now I've got to make this as catchy, and the title is very important. If you're putting text on, and granted, you want to use as little words as possible, but if it has the same idea as to what the, the subject is about, then that title works. In this case, uh, my title might say, create AI music from Suno.ai. This one says create AI music from Suno. I have two tones here. I have the main text is yellow. I've been finding that anything other than white for your title gets traction. And yellow seems to be the best option for that. But of course, it really depends on your videos and some people even match color schemes to what the videos are. So if you have a color scheme of blue, green, yellow, your title should also have that blue, green, yellow uh, swatch comparison to it. Or if you have a lot of pink in your uh, videos, they say that your title should have a lot of pink in it. I'm a very big green fan, even though my studio right now doesn't have too much green to it. Geekazine's always been green color themed. So that's where I come with that. And then of course, on the bottom of this one, I have my Geekazine logo, just like I do with, uh, with my other thumbnail, which you can see right here. So in this one, what I did was I took a picture of myself facing the other way, pointed at my desktop, and then I enlarged the screen of Suno.ai, which is where you're going to be seeing the, uh, the program. I enlarged that and then I did a little bit of photoshopping so I could be in the photo, the website could be in the photo, and then of course me pointing or anybody pointing to something is always a good thing. Adding a smile is a good thing. With this, I have put text in a spot where it can be seen. It's a little bit smaller because if I was to take this and we'll do control minus or command minus, this is what they might see when it comes to the suggested on YouTube. It can still be read and it's got a good font to it. You definitely got to take that into account. So let's bring this back up to regular size here. So this is the main, the, the test that I'm doing right here. Now let's get into TubeBuddy. First of all, what is TubeBuddy? So TubeBuddy is what they call the ultimate growth tool for YouTube channels. So, and it is. It gives you extra features that you can use onto your YouTube channel just by simply installing the Chrome extension to be able to figure out how your video is going to perform, what keywords you'll want to put in. It'll even generate some, uh, a lot of different texts, a lot of different options here. You can download the TubeBuddy. I do have to say that I do have an affiliate code with TubeBuddy. You can go to geekazine.com forward slash TubeBuddy 
Or if you go to buddy.com forward slash geek, that's my code. And of course, that helps me keep the lights on. That's over at tubebuddy.com forward slash geek. To get to that thumbnail analyzer, all we have to do is simply go over to the right here to the TubeBuddy option. In the toolbox, you have different options. And once again, depending on the level of subscription that you have, you'll get uh, different options here. A-B testing for, and title generator. And what's cool about this is you can test thumbnails, you can test titles, you can test descriptions. And what it'll do is it'll switch back and forth between a title, between a thumbnail, and then see what the best response comes from uh, for all of these. So, and you can set, you can set almost all your videos to A-B testing and then see what works best for you. But another one is suggested shorts where you can, it'll suggest areas from the video that could become little shorts for YouTube shorts for reels or whatever. They have the chapter editor, which I use all the time. And of course the thumbnail analyzer, which is what we're going to take a look at today. This is in beta and some people have asked, well, what is, what is this analyzing for AI? And I think what it's doing is it's looking for the most recognizable part of a thumbnail. Like for instance, if I had the Statue of Liberty in the center of my thumbnail, nice and big, then the heat map would be around the uh, Statue of Liberty. Of course, my subject's not about the Statue of Liberty, so the heat map would not do too much to the description. I've tried to change the description and then look at the heat map and see if there's much difference. It doesn't take into effect the content, as far as I know, whether it be title, description, tags, or whatever, but uh, it will tell you exactly what people would probably be most attracted to. And in this case, it's most attracted to the text. So the larger the text, the better on the heat map on there. Would that attract people to click on the link? That's the question. So with that said, with that done, we have our first thumbnail, which I gave it a try, and that's the heat map that I have right there. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go back into Photoshop, and as you can see, I showed you that I have my second idea here where I'm just going to show the desktop and of course my standard green, yellow, green swatch scheme here to see what the difference is between the two. So I save this as an image. Let's go back here and let's bring this in. We can drag and drop the file and then I'll take the second file and I will drop it right here. All right, now it's gonna do a little bit of analyzing and it's gonna show me if it's better or if it's worse. In this case, it says it says that it's 81% less effective. I think the reason why is because once again, I have a face in here. Basically, it's pointing towards the text, the which is the important part of why people would click. So both of these technically would work because if somebody's looking for how to create AI music, that's where they go. The first one we have AI music, not create AI music. And the second one we have create AI music. So what will be interesting is if I took out the create and just said AI music to see what would happen here. So let's go ahead and delete that. We'll bring this back up. We'll center it and then we'll go ahead and save it. All right, we'll come back down here. We'll take Suno 3 and we'll bring it in. And this is the best part is I can bring this into my analyzer and it will just simply show me all of the uploads and I've done like 20, 30 different thumbnail variations to see what would make a difference. Now in this case it says it's 84% less effective than having create AI music to it. That's pretty interesting. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to undo all that. Now I was talking about the color scheme of this. So let's go ahead and change this. We'll start here because I want to keep that yellow, that same yellow. And oops, we'll bring that. There we go. Because it's easier to do yellow than white. And then we'll come back up here and we'll say, okay, let's create white. Now we will save this. So we'll go Suno AA4. We'll bring that over here. It's going to analyze it on the bottom here. And then it's going to put it into the percentage of effectiveness. Now look at this, the yellow over white, this is interesting because the yellow over white is 81% less effective, but the white over yellow is 62% less effective because the Suno part is actually where the heat map is. Notice down here, it's hard to tell 
but uh, the red part of the heat map is at from sunodate.ai. Whereas down here, we have create AI music, and that is less effective. So on this top one, if I actually moved this up and maybe had suno.ai down up here a little bit more and a little bit bigger, that might make a difference. We'll get to that in a minute here. First of all, let's go ahead and go back. Now let's try this. Let's take the from suno.ai and we'll make it a little bit bigger. Actually, make it big enough to fit the screen. I don't want to stretch it, but I do want to put in AI here. So we're going to do create AI music from suno.ai, but this time we're going to do it all yellow and see what happens here. All right, there we go. Come back over here. We'll do suno.ai. 05 and what's interesting is I think yeah it's matching the yellow over white except now it's yellow yellow it's 81 percent for both so that's pretty interesting so it's more about the text than it is about the color in this case but there's been a lot of cases where I've tried it where I've changed the colors and the colors make a big difference here's another example let's do it this way instead we'll go from suno.ai but we'll do red that's a fiery color. That means, hey, you know, you've got to do this. I'm ang I'm angry. And of course, uh, red on green. If you're colorblind, you'll be able to see this, but uh, it, it might be a little bit jarring for some people to see at a smaller size. The best part about doing it in Photoshop is I can always shrink it down. So it looks like a thumbnail. Oops, you don't see that as a thumbnail. Let's do this. There we go. You see, it has the, there's the thumbnail right there. And that red, you notice how it's pretty small and how that red really just blurs out. The suno.ai is probably going to uh, get uh, a low percentage there. So let's go over here. Let's bring that in. Let's hide the heat map. Yeah, with that red, it actually is 61% less effective, but it is less effective than the other one which is the original image, which is interesting. For doing a little bit of testing with what I normally do here is not as effective as doing the other thumbnail. So let me, uh, let me switch this back over to the other thumbnail. All right, so this is the other thumbnail that I created right here. I uh, would we'll bring this in. And as you can see, we got me pointing at the uh, at the screen. I blurred out the background of my table. Actually, I took it completely out and just put a, uh, a dark color back there. First of all, I'm going to take out the V3 on here because it is V3 on there on that. But uh, we're going to use that opportunity to increase the font size for Suno.ai. And we're going to I always like to match the text so it kind of looks in a justified manner now we had it on the bottom let's bring this all the way to the top and see what happens here it covers my head and covers part of the screen which is why i didn't normally i didn't do it uh but we'll see what happens if we move it to the top and we uh, have yellow over white there we go now look at that moving the text to the top gave me a 49% increase, which is interesting. Now let's take a look at the image itself. And what I'd wanna do is I wanna see it as a small image. So we'll go ahead and control minus. So this is about the size that you'll probably see if you go to YouTube to see it. Now that's kind of small. I'm in the way, the screen's in the way. That's easy to fix. We can do that by simply taking me and down. And then we'll bring this down I can bring this back up like this, and then I can take out the hand, copy, cut, paste, and now I can take this pointer finger and bring it down so it kind of matches, so it doesn't get in the way of there and kind of make it look like I'm pointing a little bit. I might even give it a little bit of a turn so it works from there. So. Now I have the screen down a little bit. My face stays up, the AI music. We could even take the AI music and bring it over a little bit to kind of match. And then what this is covering, the last thing that it is missing is my little logo right there. I always like to put my bug on the bottom corner or somewhere in the video. Let's, let's actually move this over here. So let's go ahead and save that. Now we're gonna do Suno 008. Look at that, 
86% increase. Now, once again, what does that mean? How is it? Right now, it's just basing it on the text, which is what people are looking for. When it comes to a video that I do, and it's, I think this is why the Mr. Beast videos work so well with their thumbnails, is the fact that Mr. Beast is is in every thumbnail and he becomes he's a very known face. So when you see the thumbnail, you see Mr. Beast and whatever subject it is, it's Mr. Beast's face. So he becomes the point of attraction. Not all YouTubers are like that. You know, you'll see a face and go, well, I've seen that person on YouTube before and that's okay, but I don't recognize the face and you probably don't recognize my face if this is the first time that you've come to one of my videos and that's okay. But keep in mind that the more videos that my face get on for my channel, when people that are subscribed to me start looking at thumbnails and see my face, they know it's my video. And they'll say, well, I'll just click on it because it's one of his videos. I know exactly what it does. There's a lot of videos out there that keep to a pattern, keep to a format. My favorite one is uh, Screen Crush. Let me do this. Basically, if you're into Marvel movies, DC movies, uh, anything geeky, uh, Screen Crush is where you go, where they deep analyze uh, a lot of the TV shows, a lot of the movies. So as you can see, they have a very specific look to their thumbnails where they have uh, their titles there. In this thumbnail right here, it says, did the uh, next Iron Man video get canceled? Did the whatever show with the white vision or uh, Iron Heart get canceled? These are the things that is making you say, okay, I got to click to find out from here. Whereas, you know, this is uh, um, Dr. Doom over here and we've got the walking dead so they say 83 easter eggs in the walking dead simple that's gonna i'm gonna see if i watch the latest version of the ones who live episode five and uh, i want a breakdown of it learn about the things that make this show so special and that's usually an easter egg then i'll click on there so that works for screen crush what works for me is a little bit different and that's what we're trying to find so with this said and done, this with the AI music uh, from Suno.ai is 86% better than the original thumbnail, this one right here. So that's pretty interesting. And the best part with this, I can uh, say at this point, okay, I can run an A-B test on them. two of the thumbnails, that basically being the main thumbnail that's in the video right now, and then one of these others, uh, most likely the rec recommended one. I can then also say, hey, I wanna use this one as the selected thumbnail. And then it can click from there. Let's move on and continue to try and see if we can get a better score even from this. Let's go ahead. I still wanna put it into the, into the picture here. So we'll just move it over a little bit more. We're gonna move my hand over a little bit and maybe down. We're gonna take this and we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. Actually, we might even make it a little bit smaller. And bring it over here, maybe center it. And then we're gonna take our text and we're gonna make that a little bit bigger. So now with this, and I could even bring myself back in a little bit more to kind of fill in this area. I'll even take my bug and move it back over here. And then we'll go ahead and make this all small. And as you can see, AI music from Suno.ai, still a little bit small. So let's see how this fares for our thumbnail test. Bring this over here. Look at that. Making that larger made a big difference. 142% from the original. How cool is that? Now keep in mind, if I've been doing this without affecting the video as it is. So you're still seeing the main thumbnail, the first, the original thumbnail that I had. Now I can say, okay, going through the tests, I'm looking through this and this is getting better at 142%. How can I make it better? Let's find out. Now, like I said, color is a big thing for a lot of these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this back over. Since Suno.ai is the more dominant part of the heat, uh, the heat test, we're gonna change that to yellow. And we're gonna change AI music to white. And once again, this could 
be a lot different. If Suno.ai was blah, 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 dot whatever, and people didn't know blah, 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 dot whatever, AI music might take precedence in the heat map. But from what TubeBuddy has gathered from links, and that's, that's probably where they're getting their heat map from, is from collective data, not just your video, but all the videos out there that are talking about Suno.ai and saying that that is where people are gonna click when they see Suno.ai. So now we've changed, we've just simply changed the colors. We swapped it around. And notice I've been doing them as JPEGs. You can actually save them as uh, uh, ping files, but keep in mind when you get a lot of colors in a ping file that you could run into their two megabyte limit and it might say, hey, we're not uploading this video, uh, this thumbnail because it's too large. So keep that in mind. Uh, and that's why I do a lot of JPEGs, but you could definitely make your final image in PNG. And yeah, you don't need to use Photoshop. Uh, of course, you have programs like Canva out there that, and they just acquired a company called Affinity, which adds AI to their uh, system to, to compete with Photoshop. And you can definitely use that for that. But I use Photoshop because I've been using Photoshop for years. So now we have the image to swap the colors of the text. So let's go ahead and bring that in. And I think, wow, that's interesting. 71% for using white for AI music and yellow for Suno.ai, as opposed to yellow for AI music and white for Suno.ai. Yellow over white is definitely doubling on it. Now let's, let's try yellow and yellow. We can keep going. We can just keep going until we find the one that gives us the best option. So yellow, yellow is right there. It does have, a, is a little bit better than white over yellow, but it still doesn't top yellow over white. Interesting there. Let's try a different color. Let's go ahead and make this red. So yellow over red in this case. We'll bring that in. Wow, look at that. It drops significantly. Let's try white over red. And white over red. Oh yeah, look at that. 29% less effective. So it's still not even matching yellow over white. And we can do a lot of other colors. Let's try blue for this color. But dark blue would probably blend too much in the background in this case. So we'll definitely do a turquoise-ish turquoise type blue here. We'll come back over here. And then we'll drag and drop and bring that in. And it's, yeah, it's not even close to where it is. Where are we in the spectrum here? Uh, wow. Oh, wow, that dropped dramatically. Look at that, 81% over the original, over the, the first one, the, the one that's being seen on YouTube right now. Can I make this get any better? I think I can. Let's go ahead. We're, we've been working on uh, on the text here. And I bet you if I made the text even bigger, that would make a difference. So let's go ahead and make the text bigger. You can read AI music, maybe not from Suno AI, uh, but we could definitely fix that a little bit. And we would fix that by, well, let's do this one first. Come back over here. And with 15, we'll bring that in. What's that gonna do? Look at that. Oh, wow. Big jump once again. That's awesome. So almost close to 200% difference in this thumbnail versus that original thumbnail right here. So what else can we do to make this better? Well, in, like I said, in this case, it's about the text. It's not about the products. So do we do anything with the products? Well, I do want to do one thing with the product, let's try putting a overlay, a color overlay on that. So we'll go over and we'll do rectangle tool. I wanna have this rectangle tool, a different color, a nice light color. We'll do a light blue and then we'll go, that's okay, whoops. And we do, we want, I want rounded edges for my shape. So I'm gonna put that right around the text here. I'm going to bring it underneath the text so it can be seen like this. And then I always like to put in a fade, an opacity. So let's go around 50%. Let's see what happens here. And then we'll bring this in with this new background to it. 
and we'll see what that does. Where'd it go? 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 There it is right there. Look at that. 64% from the original, from that, from this first one. So we're still putting in the blue background is not going to make a difference. What if that background is a different color? So let's go ahead and do this. We'll change the fill. And let's go red. What the heck? Bring that over. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty low. Probably, that's the worst one so far, 90%. So any other colors we could do? Possibly, possibly a gradient. Let's do that. Let's see if that makes a difference. And once again, it didn't hit the top list here. It's not on the bottom, but there it is. So it had some improvement but not as much as this right here. So the black backgrounds might not be, let's do an all black background just for kicks and giggles. I have a feeling it's this is gonna match towards the top. We'll see. And did it? Yes, actually, look at that. 20% increase because now the text is better readable. Look at that. Which comes to the next part. I had a drop shadow on this text. What happens if I take out that drop shadow? I think it dropped down like to 162%. So the drop shadow is needed, but what kind of drop, can we change that drop shadow look a little bit? Right now the drop shadow is actual red. So let's see, uh, what happens if we change it to a blue? Let's go like that. Look at that, it still drops down a little bit. So that red drop shadow, seem to be the most effective. Let's see what else we can do. I think we've got a good text here. Let's try and maybe brighten up the screen a little bit to kind of give them the idea that that's what we're talking about. Now you can either brighten up the screen or make it darker. And sometimes that'll sharpen it up. So we could go this way and it kind of looks a little washed out. Or what we could also do is go this way to give it darker colors, but then we go into filter and we go to sharpen and sharpen more. And that could bring us to something new. Let's take a look. Look at that. Whoa, that really just knocked it up. 244% from the original. How cool is that? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're going to try and sharpen everything here. So basically I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take the image adjustment levels. And we're going to, it's hard to make that darker and lighter because that looks a little bit weird. So let's lighten this up. Go the other way and we'll go to filter and we will go to sharpen. We'll do the same thing with the hand and I think the hand needs to be a little bit bigger here. So now we've sharpened the face and we will sharpen the hand. And I bet you if I did have a good smile that it would probably uh, be that. So we could try to, let's do this. This is one of the things I love about Photoshop and that is Generative fill. Then we'll go smile. And we'll see what that does. I, I don't think it's gonna give me a good smile. It never does. There's one, there's two, there's three. Let's uh let's do it again. And what I love about generative fill is that I can do different options. Wow, that's a lot of teeth. That kind of works. Yeah. Let's do this one. Bring that over here. We're at 244% from the original. Wow, 253%. Look at that, we're increasing. Now keep in mind, it is from the base and that is that first image. From that, we found that this is coming up 253% better than the original. So we've improved and that's the important thing is we're always learning how to improve what we're doing. Let's go ahead and now bring that smile into, into play here. So we'll go over here and we'll take that smile and we'll do that, bring it in. Let's see what the smile makes, if it makes a difference. Yes, but not by much. So that 
that's kind of important. This is what we're going to do for our thumbnail at this point in time. And maybe a little proof from better from there if I take out all the elements and start something new, start something fresh. But right now, this is what we've got. Now, the next question is JPEG or PNG file. So we got the JPEG file right here. Let's go ahead and save this. We're gonna switch this over to PNG. We gotta watch out, like I said, if it's over two megabytes, it will not load. So we wanna take a look at this and it says that's gonna be 2.5 megabytes. So I won't be able to use this in YouTube. So I'll have to make this smaller. It says it either has to be 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. Interesting. So let's go back over here. We can go ping eight, 128 dithered. We can change the colors to 256 and that'll give us 742 and still give us a good look. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's see how that works in our process here. So bring this back over and somewhere in this mess, it is, and I can't, I don't think I'll be able to tell it doesn't say the file name. I wish it said the file name on here. That would probably be something I'll tell TubeBuddy to add is, is the file name so I can compare from all of these. In this case, JPEG will be the option. Uh, actually, no, there is one other thing we can do here. So what we'll do is we will save this one more time and we once again, we'll save it as a PNG 24, but this time we'll go 1280 by 720. This gives us a 720p thumbnail. And then we'll bring that over. And as you can see, it did not even hit the top three. So somewhere in here is the smaller PNG file. And that's what I was expecting is if you do a 1080 versus 720 image, the 1080 version will give you better quality, whether it be JPEG or PNG. Now, if I had a lot less color in there, let's do this. We'll do a new one. All we're gonna do in this file, let's uh, paint it black. We're gonna have text, boom, and boom, like this. Now we can do a PNG file. Bring this in like this. It says it needs to be large. Oh, this was 51, 51 kilobits. So it's actually too small, which is interesting. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll bring this up here, and then we're gonna bring in this bring this over here there we go all right no it still says 41.5 as a png file interesting let's take me and bring it over and now we're now we're 700 we're 800 kilobits so perfect all right let's come over here let's see if this dramatic change how this works so we'll go ahead and drop that file this is a png file now not as much as the other one so where are we in this? Right there. We're still a lot better than the original, but only by 91%. This is the other test we're doing. We're gonna save this as a JPEG and hopefully the JPEG will be large enough. 78% versus 91%. So there is a difference between a, between a PNG file and a JPEG file. Very interesting. All right, so what have we learned from creating these thumbnails through the TubeBuddy Thumbnail Analyzer? Well, one, colors on text matter. Two, brightness and sharpness matter on the images. Three, contrasting colors, very important. The more colorful it is, the better. Uh, four, having a good background that can determine that can uh, show you the, the images versus the text, very important. And five, not getting too frilly with things will help with your uh, creation. The old way that I used to do it, these, these ones right here, background image, and then of course the image on the side of the product, that gives us less chance of perfection than something like this. And I came to this not through some magical, I know how this all gets placed. In fact, Mr. Beast's team has said it publicly. They go through thousands, thousands of images where they make small little adjustments. 
move with something over there a little bit, change the color a little bit, sharpen it up a little bit, go back and forth. And then they, they test and they test and they test. Now you think to yourself, well, did they do that on YouTube or did they do that somewhere else? Something like the thumbnail analyzer, I bet you they have their own version. And they're going through those same heat maps to try and figure out, because a lot of this data can be pulled right off of YouTube through their API, and they can go through a program that goes through AI analyticals and gives you this type of result with these heat maps. Now look at that, 255% increase from the original. Now, once again, the original is the baseline, which means that if I would have started with this one down here, then I would have to figure out how to improve from there. This can be a very interesting and very tedious attempt at trying to figure out what works best. And of course, keep in mind, this is all a part of a beta part of TubeBuddy, which is constantly changing. And even if it was in production, I would hope that would constantly change because what the eye gets drawn to is the most important thing. In this case, is it about AI music? Is it about the website, suny.ai? Is it about my face? Is it about the product? That can change from video to video. If you're in New York and talking about the Statue of Liberty, have the Statue of Liberty in the middle. I bet you the heat map will point right at the Statue of Liberty over the text, over your face. But then if you become more popular on YouTube and people click on thumbnails because they see your face, then your face becomes that part of the heat map, which is why so many people talk about how Mr. Beast is doing it. And then they put in the thumbnail, Mr. Beast. Makes sense? I think so. So anyway, that is what we did. We did about 25 different thumbnails. You can go right down the line. You can spend a whole day on this, making small little adjustments, big adjustments. What happens if I do this, if I do this? But for the baseline, we know the larger the thumbnail, the better. 1920 by 1080. I don't think you can go larger than that. PNG over JPEG. But if you run into too many colors, you'll have to use JPEG. That's just how that'll work. Sharp images and a good contrast on them. So the blacks pull out and you'll, you'll have a pretty decent thumbnail to use. Now, the best part about this is I can take this, I can take both of these thumbnails and I could now say, okay, use this as the selected thumbnail. I'll hit okay and boom, it is now the selected thumbnail. Look at that, that changed. Whoops, that did change all those other thumbnails. Let's go back to thumbnail analyzer. So as you can see now, this is the baseline and let's uh, enlarge that a little bit. That's the baseline. And then all of these others are better or actually worse than that. And the percentages are different. So keep that in mind. It's whatever it starts at the baseline and where you can work from there. So now I could clear all of these out and then I could start over. What I'm probably gonna do, turn off the heat maps for a second. I'll probably take these top two right here, which I think is basically uh, the last two that we did. We'll keep the one with the smile and then we'll do the one without the smile. And then I'll do an A-B test on that. So I think if I do this and I say run A-B test on the thumbnail, it'll say, how do you wanna run this test? Do you wanna go until it re reaches statistical significance? 14 days, we're gonna go until it reaches statistical significance. We can also say start as soon as possible or start on the specific day. We'll do that, so. And then we're gonna go here so that we have the smile here and then the non-smile here. And we'll hit the start test button. It, it uh, definitely scheduled it. You can also do it through TubeBuddy's uh, website through the, uh, through the pages there. So it says that it's uh, successfully scheduled. So we'll do that. And right now there's a smile in and there's gonna be a point where there's no smile. And then after a significant amount of time, it'll tell me which one is better. We'll see which one is better from here. But the question is, is that a thumbnail you'll click on? If you were interested, if you have that interest of AI music and want to know more about SUNY.AI, is that a thumbnail you'll click on if you see it in YouTube? Let me know in the comments down below over at youtube.com forward slash geekazine or geekazine.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, the bell notifications so you know all YouTubers can get their wings that way. And uh, 
check out some of the other videos in the playlist. We just talked about sunome.ai, so go ahead and check that out. And of course, if you love this video, please go over to tubebuddy.com forward slash geek and sign up there. Of course, that gets me credit to keep the lights on and keep these videos flowing for you. And then, of course, all the other action from CES uh, going to NAB in the next couple of weeks. So we'll be seeing a lot of cameras and lights and, and everything that deals with audio video production, which is awesome. Awesome. and then some of the other events down the road at geekazine.com. Until next time, you guys geek out and make your thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs>